so now today what we are going to talk about is interacting systems it is in no means it's going to cover all possibles of possible interacting systems but it is just to give you a flavor of how you treat interacting system even to this extent we are going to consider weakly interacting now so far in all the systems that we have considered particularly in the canonical ensemble as well as in the metro canonical ensemble we considered all our particles to be non interacting so that the advantage was in the canonical formalism we could write down then particle partition function zn is equal to q to the power n divided by n factorial the n factorial essentially was because of the indistinguishability of the particles and q to the power q was the single particle partition function so hopefully you will recall all these details but in real life uh, ideal gases and ideal things are really ideal in the sense that they are just a model that we can do on pen and paper uh, it gives you a nice feeling that you have an analytical result but in real life things are very difficult you have interacting systems with particles interacting with each other <coughs> so the idea is how do we treat such things so we will take the example of a hydrostatic system for example a gas of n particles and each of these particles interact there is a pairwise interaction between these particles we will call them let's call v of r i j now usually mostly this pairwise interaction is typically either taken as a hard core which again gives you certain advantages or is a soft core a hard core potential is if you plot the potential as a function so let's say you place this particle ith particle and this is the distance from the center of the ith particle and you are plotting v of r you say that there is a certain size of this particle so therefore we will say so there is a certain size of this ith particle and no another particle can come and sit in this uh, inside this volume so essentially we say that the potential is infinite it's infinitely large high so that you cannot have any kind of penetration in this part right clearly so vr is infinity for r less than sigma we will say that the size is sigma and is zero otherwise this is one type of modeling and this is typically called the hard sphere system uh, there is an advantage over here because your effectively your potential goes to infinity uh, therefore you see in the canonical ensemble we always used to write e to the power minus beta v of r but then since v is infinity beta doesn't play a role so such systems are typically athermal which means all the properties that you see doesn't does not depend on the temperature but rather it depends on the volume fraction of the particles now the second type of interacting systems that pe people typically model are what are called soft core for example one of them is what is called leonard jones potential and that is sigma over r to the power 12 minus sigma over r to the power 6 there are various modifications they are also called uh, uh, m n potential with this being m and the n being 2m so this is the repulsive part and this is the uh, 
attractive part so the generalization can be this but these are all uh, generalizations of this but the bottom line is if you plot now you see this part the potential has a minima this potential has a minimum at r is equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6 sigma not exactly sigma but sigma so this potential is very steep but it shows a sh attractive basin and then vanishes and this is where it's 2 to the power 1 sixth of sigma now this is a soft potential right <coughs> Here, of course, your temperature will play a role. You will have a phase transition or uh, all the properties will depend on the temperature of the system, unlike your hard sphere. So the question now is, how do you handle such a thing? So let's start. Uh, and our starting point, again, is the n-particle Hamiltonian which is given by sum over i pi square over 2m plus i j i less than j this is the interaction and we will call this as v of r i j before we go further we define a function e to the power minus beta of v r i j minus 1 as f of r i j uh, the alternative notation that we are often going to use is instead of f of r i j, we will write them as f of i j. But that comes later on. Good. So we have this interaction. And clearly you see that I am considering only pairwise interaction. So there is only pairwise interaction in the system. I mean, you can cook up any more more complicated interactions which are three particle four particle interactions but it suffices for us to consider such a simple system let's calculate the n particle partition function the n particle partition canonical partition function is one over n factorial one over h to the power 3n and if you have forgotten how this comes the n factorial comes from the indistinguishability of particles this factor is essentially uh, to make zn dimensionless because after all kbt ln zn is going to give you the free energy and then of course you have d of xn e to the power minus beta h where this vector is now the set r1 r2 rn p1 p2 pn <coughs> if i work it out explicitly i have dr1 dr2 drn integral dp1 dp2 dpn and then the hamiltonian is sum over i pi square over twice m minus beta and then you have minus beta i less than j v of r i j right now this is the part which is doable it's essentially product over i dp i e to the power minus beta pi square over twice m so it's three integrals and i know what is this is going to give so i can immediately write down this as this h to the power 3n is going to so this is going to be 2 uh, square root pi by a each of this integral is going to be pi and then a is going to be 
beta twice m pi 3 by 2 there are n such particles so you are going to have 3n by 2 so this integral is going to be 3n by 2 so I am going to have 1 over h to the power 3n twice m pi over beta raised to the power 3n by 2 integral dr1 dr2 drn is e to the power minus then we continue with this ij v of rij this part we are already very familiar with and this takes the form 1 over n factorial 1 over lambda t raised to the power n where <coughs> lambda t is the thermal de broglie wavelength uh, thermal de broglie volume and i have dr1 dr2 d of rn e to the power minus beta sum of i less than j v of rij so there is a double summation i comma j as well as i less than j now <coughs> lambda t is lambda t whole cube where lambda t is beta uh, it's going to be beta h square over twice m raised to the power 5. We can recast this so that things are familiar with our ideal gas result. We write this as v over lambda t raised to the power n and 1 over v to the power n dr1 drn e to the power minus beta sum over ij i less than j v of rij if you expand this sum you see this becomes v of r12 one particle number one interacting with particle number two then you have beta of v r13 so on and so forth and all of this factor out as beta v r12 minus minus beta v r 1 3 so on and so forth now recall we had defined the function beta of v r i j minus 1 is going to be f of i j so clearly <coughs> this means i can use this to rewrite e to the power minus beta v r i j as 1 plus f of i j so i have 1 plus f 1 2 1 plus f 1 3 all possibilities so that this becomes product over pairs 1 plus f i j <coughs> so the canonical partition function then takes the form 1 over n factorial v over lambda t raised to the power n 1 over v to the power n dr1 drn product over pairs 1 plus f of ij <coughs>